Hey guys, welcome back. So, so far in this course, we have been talking about controllers and front controllers. And basically, we are learning Spring MVC. So, you might be asking me right now, Avilas, right now we are learning MVC, right? Model, view, controller. But we are only talking about controllers and front controllers. So, basically, there are two more things remaining. One is view and one is model. Where are they, right? So, Today is the right time to talk about the views because we have already done a lot of hands-on on our controllers and front controllers. I hope you are also doing the hands-on and probably you are right now started getting comfortable with uh, all those things that we have done. So right now let's start an interesting topic and it's all about view right now okay so today i'll be only talking about views okay so uh, when we say view what does it mean it's just a web page right i think you have already gone through my mbc design pattern course and there they are we have been talking about jsps and how to create views in jsp or how, how to use jsp page and all those things so we have been covered there and probably you are right now comfortable with you know what do you mean by views right they are just web pages so let's get into our project right now and here right now let's start creating our first view in our spring mbc project so right now if you are going to see in my screen i am right now on my project called my first spring mbc project that we have created you know uh, a couple of episodes before and I am right now on the project my first MBC project and here if I'm going to my Java resources and SRC folder these are the controllers that we have created so far in this course so let me take one of the controller here let's say bro controller so right now whenever we are writing the controllers we are basically using a tag called at response body right and as I told you before, if I'm writing at response body, uh, you know, over this particular method. So what it means that, you know, this particular string that you are returning right now, this will be retained to your HTTP response body. Okay. So right now, I think my server is started. So you can see my server is started. So to get started right now, let me hit this particular URL in my web browser and let's try to access or let, let's try to invoke this particular method and let's see this particular things is getting printed in my web browser or not and from there on we will go for we'll go further right we'll be changing a lot of things right now in our project right so let me go to my web browser my tomcat server is started as you can see here let me go to my google chrome and let me uh, try to hit this particular url okay so if i if i'll be going to my uh, web.xml file this is my dispatcher servlet and it is mapped with a url called slash home.com so let me try to access this let me say localhost 8080 and then my project name what is my project name my project name is my first dash mbc dash project so let me write my first uh, mbc dash project okay after that let's type in home.com and after that slash cricket bat we have used it last time right so i think this is the correct mapping if i hit enter and there you go hey man this is your cricket bat and this is what uh, you know if you see in a controller in a bro controller this is what we are trying to return correct hey man this is your cricket bat and that's what you know in the http response body dispatcher servlet is actually writing this particular message right that's why you're getting it uh, but what about if i'm going to remove the at response body annotation from here if i'm going to comment this out if i'm going to comment this out i'll do control s uh, my uh, my changes will be reload again if i'll do if i'll go to my console hopefully my server will reload my changes let me wait for that to happen and you can see my server has reloaded my changes now let me go here and let me hit again this particular url let's see what is happening and now you can see it is giving me a 404 error it is saying me page not found so what basically happens if you do not give the at response body annotation over your method so this particular string is getting returned to your dispatcher servlet 
and right now your dispatcher servlet is looking for a page name or it is looking for a view with this particular name so let me change this particular string so it will be comfortable for understanding so let me change it let me make it okay uh, cricket bat let, let me say mrf uh, cricket bat mrf is the cricket bat that tendulkar used to play so let me do control s okay so right now uh, let me wait till my server you know reload my changes here we go it's reloading everything so now you can see my changes has been reloaded and is completed let me go over here if i'm going to hit this particular url obviously i'm going to get a 404 error because right now what what happening is dispatcher servlet whenever it is not getting this at response body annotation over this particular method the dispatcher servlet is assuming that this particular pay this particular name that, that we are returning right now this is a page name this is a web page name which is not available right now over here inside the web inf directory because we have not created any web page yet right but if i am going to remove this annotation if i am going to remove this comment here okay right now you can see the things are going to work fine because because i'm providing the add response body annotation here right so right now if i'm going to hit this url again obviously you know this particular string will be returned to my browser if i'm going to hit it again now you can see if i'm going to hit it now see mrf cricket bat is coming so now the thing is we we do not want to write the string to our web browser right now i want my controller to return a proper web page right we are dealing with mbc right our controller should return the view name right so what i'm going to do right now i'm going to remove this at response body completely from here and let me try to you know bring in the view stuff right let me start creating view right now for my project okay so right now what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this mrf cricket bat i'm going to copy this i'm going to command c it and then i'll go to uh, web inf folder right here and let me create a new uh, folder first okay let me create a new folder let's say view here i'm going to in this view folder i am going to store my views i'm going to store my web pages so let me create a web page let me do new jsp file i'm going to create a uh, jsp page and the name i'm going to give it to this particular file is called mrf cricket bat the things that i've copied there i've just pasted it here and i'm going to do finish okay now you can see a jsp page has been created for me let me remove all this stuff so i don't need it and let me remove the head tag i don't need it okay let me make it very simple for you right now and let me write something here with a h1 tag let's say um, what what i can say amrf uh, cricket bat okay let's say sachin used to play with this bat okay uh that's cool and i can give a color to this particular page let's say uh, bg color let's say pink all right okay so now i can do what here in the controller i can actually you know it, I, if i want i can actually directly return this particular page so here what i can say this particular page that i have created it is inside the view folder right so what i can do here i can go to my controller and i can write this particular page is in uh, view folder okay it, it is in view folder and this view folder where it is if i see here it is inside the web inf folder you can see here this web inf contains this view folder so i can write slash again and i can write web dash inf and i can give a porous slash here there you go so let me right now invoke this particular method called give cricket bat by hitting this particular url uh, in a slash cricket bat let me see whether this particular method is able to provide me the view that i have just created over here inside this view folder mrf cricket bat okay this is the particular view that i am returning there is a mistake here guys mrf cricket bat dot jsp the file name is right so let me correct my file name mrf cricket bat dot jsp cool and there you go 
So right now, let me go to my web browser again and let me hit enter here and let me see what is going to happen. There we go. MRF cricket bat. Sachin used to play with this bat. Cool. So right now, my controller, instead of a string, it is actually returning a proper view. Okay. So it is actually returning a web page called MRF cricket bat dot JSP. That this this is this is the page that I just created here, right? Cool. So right now you must be thinking that okay, right now my uh, job is done. Right now I know how to create view in uh, Spring MVC and how to you know deal with views. Basically, my controller need to return the view name. Okay, uh, that is partially correct. But I'll tell you what, guys, the standard that we have maintained right now. To write this particular method is really really bad we are not utilizing spring MVC feature right now my particular method give cricket bat is actually returning uh, my view to the dispatcher servlet and dispatcher servlet is actually giving me this particular view that is fine but it is this is not a proper standard to do code in spring MVC I'll tell you why so guys right now I'll tell you why it is a bad approach okay so guys think like uh, this is a funny application right now we are building but assume that this is a real time application. I have done this coding. I have given this application to my client and after a few days my manager called me to his chamber. Uh, then he asked me Avilash you know what what I am thinking you just do one work for me. See right now your web pages that you are creating just right here MRF cricket bat. This web page that you have created, you have created under a folder called view. And this view you have kept it under a folder called web INF. I didn't want it. Could you please move this view folder to meta INF folder? Okay. Could you please move this view folder to meta INF folder? And I told to my manager that you know what? Uh, I think the way I have coded is pretty fine. This is a standard that I followed. Obviously, the view. And the view pages, okay, your your view should be there inside the web content and web INF folder. It should not be there inside the meta INF folder. Then my manager look at me just like this, and he called the security, and he, and he told the security, could you please throw this guy out? Then I said, uh, don't do it. <laughs> I'm going to change it. I'm going to change whatever you say. So right now you want me to change uh, this folder location from web INF directory to meta INF directory I'm going to do it for you so then I have returned to my desk and the next thing that I did is I just hold this view folder here and I move it up to meta INF folder right as my manager said the view folder should be there inside the meta INF folder right now it should not be there inside the web INF folder they are paying me whatever they said I have done that right so right now the problem you see right now if you see in our controller we have given this path here my controller knows that this mrf cricket bat.jsp page is available on inside a view folder whose view folder is present inside the web inf directory or inside the web inf folder but i have moved this view folder to meta inf folder right now if i'm going to my web browser if i'm going to hit enter now you can see i'm getting a 404 error again obviously the path where that particular page exists is getting changed, right? And if that gets changed, then how we can expect that we will get a page here, right? So what we need to do right now, we need to change the path here in my controller. In my controller right now, I need to make some changes. So what I need to do over here right now, inside this web INF, I need to write this particular folder, meta INF, right? So let me write meta caps lock on meta inf and let me control s it let me wait till my changes will be reloaded and it's done right now it says it's completed let me go back to my page right now if i do enter here right now obviously now this is going to work because i have done changes right now in my controller handler method cool okay so right now after a few days my manager again called me to his chamber then he asked me I will ask for view technologies what you are using I said for view I am using JSP right now he said okay what are the other technologies available for view I said you can use uh, velocity free marker HTML right time leave anything you want 
but I'm using JSP here. But I think because I think you know JSP is pretty fine for my project right now. Then my manager say, okay, I think you know HTML is fascinating. HTML is really good. Could you please change all your views to HTML? Then I said, how could you say that to me? This is not a standard, right? My project has already been developed. I cannot change it. Then he said, again, do whatever I say. Then obviously, what I need to do right now, I need to change my page extension here, which is there here, mrfcricketbat.jsp. I need to change this extension. I need to go to rename and I need to change this dot JSP extension to dot HTML. Okay, and I do okay here. And right now, if I'm going to this particular browser, and again, if I'm going to hit this particular URL, I'm going to get a 404 error. And the reason you know already, in my controller, right, in my, if, I, if I'm going to my controller right now, here I'm giving a dot JSP extension, right? So this is not flexible. Uh, now this is so tightly coupled so I need to change this thing to HTML inside my controller also so I am again changed my controller methods here ok so the path here again I have changed it to .jsp to .html right now again if I go to my web browser if I am going to hit enter here now you can see everything works good so might be you are also getting irritated right now this is not completely making sense right you are just changing the .jsp extension to .html extension and you are moving the moving your view files from web inf to meta inf to a something different directory okay you are just changing the controller core again and again and you are thinking right and you know what after this incident my project architect he called me and he asked me a question avilash i have seen that for the last couple of days you have changed your controller code I mean your controller handler method code uh, in a couple of times or two or three times why did you do that uh, so I said that uh, you know what my project manager wanted me to do that he wanted me to change the you know view file location uh, he wanted me to change the you know front end technology that I am using so that's why I had to change the you know this particular path right over here uh, so I had to change my controller method quite a few times then my architect told me, Avilash, you know what, do not mind, but you do not know Spring MBC. You do not know how to use Spring MBC. In Spring MBC, your controller does not need to return a fully qualified path just like this. Okay, you don't need to do it. There are some other technologies which are available. Go to internet and do some research. Then, then I went to internet. I did analyze this particular problem and I find an amazing thing and that thing is called view resolver using a view resolver you actually do not need to tightly couple this particular path right over here inside your controller method you do not have to do it if you want to do this kind of stupid changes you need to go to your spring configuration file and there you can do it okay now let's understand what is a view resolver is now let's go through a particular slide where I'll give you a brief Okay guys, after this incident, I went from my office, I reached my home, then I started analyzing this particular problem. Okay, so actually, my manager wanted me to change this particular part. And my manager wanted me to change this particular part, right? So basically, this is particularly the path that I have for my mrfcricketbat.jsp page, right? And sometime, uh, the scenario comes just like somebody wants me to change this and sometimes the scenario is coming somebody is wanted to change this particular part so this part is changing okay and this part also might be changed in your project right but your view name whatever the name of your file this is not changing this is getting constant okay the extension is changing or the folder location is getting changed okay so this kind of problem we can solve by using view resolver in spring mbc you know what the way i have coded this is, this is my fault this is not my manager's fault so today my manager is telling me to change tomorrow somebody else can come to me and can tell me to change this particular part or this particular part right so we have to handle this kind of scenario inside our spring configuration file 
But before that, let me give you a quick walkthrough that how to handle this kind of scenario. See guys, the way we need to return a view from our controller is basically we need to return only the page name. We do not have to keep the extension here or we do not have to keep the folder location here. Okay, it is pretty straightforward. Only return your page name. That's it. In my case, this is MRF Cricket Bat. Okay, so now let's say uh, this is my client. This is a browser. And in my browser, this particular guy sitting right there is hitting a URL called home.com slash cricket bat. And as you know, my dispatcher servlet of my application is mapped with an URL pattern called slash home.com slash star, which handle any request starting from home.com. Obviously, this request starts from home.com and followed by slash cricket bat. Obviously, my dispatcher servlet handle this request and pass it to, to the necessary uh, you know, controller which can handle this subsequent URL called slash cricket bat. So you can see here this particular method handles slash cricket bat request. So my dispatcher servlet forward the request to this particular controller. And right now this particular method get invoked because the handler mapping matched right here slash cricket bat slash cricket bat. And this particular method right now is only returning the page name here MRF cricket bat. So once it returns the page name to the dispatcher servlet, now the dispatcher servlet is actually doesn't know how to resolve this particular page name. Now the dispatcher servlet knows that this is a page name, but he doesn't know where this particular page is exist. He also doesn't know what is the extension of this particular page name, whether it is .jsp, whether it is .html, dispatcher servlet doesn't know it. So to help this patch of servlet to know this thing, we can actually use a view resolver and we can actually configure a view resolver inside our spring configuration file. And what the view resolver does, so the dispatch of servlet is actually going to hand over this particular name, whatever the controller is returning. So the dispatch of servlet is going to tell view resolver, see, I have something MRF cricket bat. I do not know where this particular page exists. So could you please find this particular page name and could you please give me the exact path where this particular page is available? Then the view resolver job is, it is basically going to take this particular name, whatever your controller is returning, MRF cricket bat, and basically it adds a prefix and it's add a suffix. This part is called prefix, which is your folder location where this particular page is present and actually it add a suffix as well. This is your page extension. So now this is a complete path of that particular page what your controller is returning. So right now I can tell that my MRF cricket bat this particular page is present inside the webinf slash view folder and this particular page extension is .jsp and once the view resolver forms this it is going to give it back to the dispatcher servlet by forming the complete path here, right? You can see right now, this particular page is available inside the web in a view and having an extension called .jsp. So once the dispatcher servlet get to know where this particular page presents, is actually gives back the same page to my client, what my client is going to see it in the browser. Okay, pretty simple. Is it clear? Okay, sounds good. Right now, let's go ahead and let's learn about the view resolver a little. So guys, in our Spring framework, there are plenty of view resolvers available. But right now, the view resolvers that we are going to use in our project right now, that's called internal resource view resolver. This is a class which has been already retained by the Spring framework developers. You don't have to write this particular class. I just want to show you that particular class as by simplifying it so that it will print on your brain right now that there is a view resolver present inside the spring framework called internal resource view resolver and the job of this view resolver is to resolve the view for the dispatcher servlet okay so inside this view resolver class right now there are two important property presents one is called prefix one is called suffix 
right there are basically different properties are also there inside this particular class but the two important property that we care about is prefix and suffix and obviously there are getter and setter method inside this particular class as well but but i have taken only the setter method as a code snippet just to show you okay in a frame okay so so let's say i have a set prefix method and i have a set suffix method okay so now tell me if i will tell you to write a program in java right now to you know create the internal resource view resolver object and to set these two property how you are going to do it obviously it is pretty simple first you are going to create the object of internal resource view resolver and obviously then you are going to say view resolver dot set prefix and you give the prefix and then you are going to say view resolver set suffix and you are going to give the suffix name so in our case the prefix name is this this is my folder location and the suffix name is this is my file extension let's say dot jsp okay that's good but right now i'll give you a task and i'll check how much you remember from your spring core course just tell me guys how you will configure these three lines in your spring configuration file by using xml by using simple xml how you are going to create a bean for internal resource view resolver obviously it is pretty simple first you need to create a bin okay this is your class name internal resource view resolver you give it a id id name could be anything then actually in this particular class internal resource view resolver there are two property prefix and suffix so we need to use property tag inside our bin and bin just like this we can we can say property name is prefix so this is the property inside the class and this is the value for that particular prefix and right now similarly we can say suffix and this is actually the value for the suffix cool i think you get this so this is how simple is it to configure the internal resource view resolver inside your spring configuration file okay so now let's get into our spring tool suit sts or eclipse whatever you are using and let's try to understand how we are going to configure this inside our spring configuration file obviously we are going to do the same thing here so it will not be that difficult for you to understand okay so now switch to sts okay so now let's try to configure the view resolver in our project okay so the first thing that i'm going to do i'm going to uh, you know move this particular view folder from meta inf to web inf okay I just moved it just just wanted to show you just wanted to demonstrate to you okay right now my view folder is present inside the web inf and right over here inside the controller i am not going to you know write all these things right here i only want my page name to return just like this mrf cricket bat that's it obviously i'm going to control save it if i'm going to run this particular application you know that this is not going to run we have already seen this so right now to run this particular application we need to configure a view resolver in our application and as i have shown you that you know there is a view resolver available called internal resource view resolver so let me find this particular class right now put command shift t in your eclipse or in an sts whatever you are using and uh, you can see i have already searched for it so you can search, search for it right now internal resource view resolver and you'll find that internal resource view resolver class right over here now double click it now obviously it is it is saying the source is not available again i'm going to attach my source i'll click here external location external folder i'll go to my download folder and here i will go to spring framework master i'll do open and okay so that's it it is going to load my source code for internal resource view resolver you can see this is the class that i was talking about okay so i told you that inside internal resource view resolver there are two important property one is called prefix one is called suffix so you can see right now uh, there is no property here called prefix or suffix right uh, there is only one property here called always include but where is prefix and suffix right did i said wrong things to you not at all so right now you can see this particular class extend to url based view resolver class 
if, if I'm going to command click it, if I'm going to open this class, now here you can see there is a, a property called prefix and suffix, right? Obviously, this particular class is extended by my internal resource view resolver, then these two property will be by default coming to my, my class, right? So let me go back, oh, sorry. Let me do command shift T again, internal resource view resolver, okay? So inside internal resource view resolver, uh, my prefix and suffix property is not available. It is coming from the super class, which is URL based view resolver. And here only my prefix and suffix is coming. And for this two, there is a setter method, right? So if I am going to do command O, it is going to basically show all the methods and you are going to uh, search for set prefix method. And there you go. Here, here, here you have a set prefix and similarly you have the set suffix method right here. What is the set prefix method is doing is basically setting the prefix whatever you are passing in the parenthesis right that particular prefix it is actually you know uh, you know setting it to this dot prefix. Don't be get confused by looking into this code. This is not doing anything special. This is not doing anything tricky. If you are trying to understand it that's fine. If you're not understanding this thing also, let it go. But this is pretty simple, right? What it is doing, now can you can you see this code? It, this is saying this dot prefix. This is basically trying to set the prefix and it is trying to set the prefix. If, if it is saying that whatever prefix we are passing in the argument, if that is not equal to null, then set prefix, okay? If this value is not null, then set it to this particular value else set nothing the set a default string value that's it right now let's go back to our own class i just wanted to show you the source file so that if you're getting time if you're getting your free times you can go or you can go there and you can play right there right this is a pretty nice thing to do this is a pretty nice thing to, to spend your leisure time okay uh, no problem with that so right now what I can do is I can go to my spring configuration file or which is bin.xml file and here I can set my view resolver. Now I, I told you right your bin.xml file is called your spring configuration file or some people call this web application context right uh, and inside this particular file uh, right now I am going to configure my bin and in my bin right now I'll give it a id my id name will be let's say view resolver and my class name will be let me give the fully qualified path name of internal resource view resolver let me search that particular class right now i'll come to this particular class do a right click and i will copy the qualified name i'll go back to my bins.xml file and i'll do a control v right and there you go and here Basically, I need to set a property uh, the way we need to do the setter injection by using a property tag and here I need to give the value for prefix and suffix. If you, are, if you are getting confused with the name, obviously you can go to this particular class. You can copy the name prefix and suffix from there. Prefix, let me copy this. Inside this particular class, there is a property available called prefix and the value that I want to give it slash web inf slash web inf uh, slash view view in small view slash right this is the this is the uh, view folder right all are small so that i think this is fine and similarly let me end the property tag right here and let me copy this control c control v it again and let me write it suffix here and the value for suffix is what is my page extension so if i will go to my view folder and if you'll see here my extension is dot html for now let me go back to my bins.xml file and let me say dot html and there you go you are done with configuring your prefix and suffix for your internal resource view resolver you can select all do a control shift f to format everything and there you go we have created this particular beam right okay so now there are a lot of pages i have opened let me close all the unnecessary pages and right now let me close the web.xml also let me go to bro controller now my bro controller is only turning 
MRS cricket bat. But when this thing will be uh, given to dispatcher servlet, dispatcher servlet is going to look for uh, this particular view resolver, and this particular view resolver is going to add this thing. Okay, let me control say it. This will add this thing. Then uh, this will go. Uh, whatever your controller is returning this particular string, this will take this string. Okay. Then here it will add this particular thing dot html right now this particular thing will be given to your dispatcher servlet and now your dispatcher servlet will be able to find this particular file from a proper folder location which is this and then this and this particular page okay right here cool so right now let me remove this okay this is just to show you let me remove this let me do control s okay and now let me run my project again okay so let me i have done a lot of changes let me restart my server again let me collapse everything okay so now let me do a right click run as run on server and next and finish cool so right now uh, if i'll go to my web browser here and let me hit the same url now let's see what is happening and there you can see my page is coming right here right so here, here also you can do the same thing home.com slash cricket bat there you go it's working cool so now you know how your controller is basically returning a logical name okay and how this logical name is guessed used by the view resolver to construct a fully qualified path name correct which is going to be used by the dispatcher servlet and then dispatcher servlet will know that okay this is the file that i need to return to my client or to my web browser who is actually giving me a request pretty simple okay right now try this out and do some hands-on whatever we have done right over here in this tutorial try to do the same thing okay and tell me if you are facing any problem keep me posted So I think now you understand how your controller here, if you go to your pro controller and how this handler method is only returning a page name right here. It is called a logical name. And this particular page name has been given to your dispatcher servlet and your dispatcher servlet does what? It go to your bin start XML file. It use this view resolver right here to resolve the view. And once it get the view, it keeps that particular view back to your client right this is what the particular flow is i hope you guys are clear right now how to use a view resolver and basically guys if you do a control shift t and if you do a plus view resolver search view resolver then you can see there are a lot of view resolver available here right here in spring so right now we are using internal resource view resolver probably further in the course we'll be getting chance to use some different resolver and i'll be telling you that but if somebody right now uh, is asking you about view resolver in your interview you can tell him about the internal resource view resolver and you can tell him that i have used this particular resolver in my project it takes a suffix it takes a prefix and this is how we generate the view name on the fly giving it back to the dispatcher servlet and dispatcher servlet right now knows which view to show to the client and you know hopefully he will be happy with your answer right and guys before i wrap up this tutorial i'll tell you one more thing here so guys there is a way there is a shortcut to write this particular thing right here we have manually written it because i just wanted to check whether you remember spring code properly or not okay but actually you can write this particular thing by using a shortcut let me remove this particular view resolver from here okay let me do a control s so there is nothing uh, i i have not configured a view resolver here i have removed it let me click here in the bins okay so right here i'm going to create a bin right 
actually we are creating a bin previously so let me create a new bin so let me click here new bin okay and give it an id let's say view resolver okay go to the class here you can click on browse and you can search for internal resource view resolver right here internal resource view resolver check that which package it is coming or the spring framework that web that's already view which is perfect click here and then do a finish okay right here there you go right now if you go to source you can see your your view resolver has been created by your ide okay and the next thing you can do is by adding the property uh, you know prefix and suffix the way you can do it you can go to bins again and you can click on view resolver you can do a right click go to bins and add insert property element name okay here do one word the name is prefix prefix here and the value is you can give slash caps wave dash inf okay dash view uh, for our class okay and you can also create a suffix just like this go to name type suffix we do control space select it go to value and you can do dot html there you go do control s go to source and there you go this thing is right now written by your spring sorry not by spring framework by your id so okay. there you go that's it for today's tutorial because it's already 12 5 it's already 12 o'clock in the night let me sleep i'm feeling sleepy hopefully i'll see you in the next time bye bye